Today is Thursday. It's September the 16th. My apology for a little bit more of a casual appearance. I am traveling and uh, it's a joy to be able to come to you with today's devotional. The title is SOS, A Cry for Help. Now, our scripture reading today is one chapter, a very brief one, Psalm chapter 70, uh, only five verses long. And uh, we really do not know much about the background other than it appears that in this psalm there is a time of crisis. Whether it's in David's life or it's in the life of Israel, we do not know. But I do want to give you four spiritual thoughts that you and I can take from Psalm 70. And I hope that you'll have your Bible and look at these verses as we go through them. I will read them. Psalm 70, verse 1 I have subtitled, A Cry for Help. In Psalm 70 and verse 1, we read, Make haste, O God. Now, the word God there is Elohim. It's the mighty God. Make haste, O God, to deliver, to save, to rescue me. Make haste to me, O Lord. Now, Lord there is Yahweh. It is the personal name of God to the Jewish people. So what was David praying? He was praying to the Lord to come to his aid, uh, to make haste, uh, uh, to not uh, tarry. Now, we don't know the circumstance that prompted the king's cry. However, there was a crisis, and he was anxious for the Lord to come before it was too late. Now, that cry of help is followed in verse 2 and 3 by what I'm calling a cry for vindication. Psalm 70 and verse 2 Let them, David's adversaries, his enemies, let them be ashamed, humiliated, and confounded, disgraced, that seek after my soul. Let them be turned backward and put to confusion, disgrace, that desire my hurt. You know, anyone in leadership can identify with the king's anguish in this verse, There are always those waiting for an opportunity to bring down a righteous man. Now, David does not name his adversaries, but there were many who sought for his ruin. And he not only desired his own vindication, but he longed that his enemies might be exposed, filled with shame, frustrated, and humiliated. Verse 3 continues, Let them be turned back, for a reward, uh, that is, the consequences of their sin, and other shame that say, aha, aha. Now, that aha, aha is a, a scorn. It is a scoffing. It is a David's enemies heaping reproach upon him with one word. And so David prayed that his enemies might not only suffer the shame and consequence of their sin, but be frustrated in their efforts. And that brings me to the second thought, and that is a prayer, the third thought, a prayer for those who seek the Lord. And so David now turns from his enemies, and he remembers the righteous with this prayer. Verse 4, let all those that seek thee, Lord, rejoice and be glad in thee. Let such as love thy salvation, thy deliverance, say continually, let God be magnified. Though David was hurting for the threats and attacks of those who sought after his ruin, he did not allow his enemies to dominate his thoughts. His prayer turned from focusing on his adversaries to praying for the saints. And David prayed that those who seek the Lord might rejoice in him and delight in God's salvation. Now confess, or contrast rather, the scoffing of the wicked in verse 3. Aha! Aha! With the believers cry, let God be magnified. Well, therein is the heart of people of faith. Let God be glorified. Let God be magnified. Let him be lifted up. And now verse 5, David's humility and confession. David, humbled by the attacks of his enemy, having thought of God's people and prayed for them that God would be magnified. In verse 5 now, David confesses, I am poor. That is humble, afflicted, wretched even, and needy, and in want. Make haste unto me, O God, 
Thou art my help. You're my strength and my deliverer, my escape. O oh Lord, make no tear him. David was king, and his outward man was far from poor and needy. He was very wealthy, but it was his inner soul, his inner man, that felt the sorrow and anxiety from the assaults of those who desired to ruin him. The prayer of the psalm we find here then concludes as it began with a cry for God to quickly respond and a confession that the Lord alone was his help, his strength, and deliverer. Here's a closing thought for you. Where do you turn in times of distress and trouble? In this world that we live in, this uh, fallen world, this world of sin, there are always enemies and adversaries of God. There are always those things that distress us and trouble us, whether it's physical or family or interpersonal relationships with others or fear of the government. There are a lot of things that can heap anxiety upon us. And I fear there are too many believers that turn their own to their own wiles and their own ways. And some become overcome with anxiety and depression. And some may take their own lives in a desperate attempt to escape their sorrows. And where should you turn in a time of trouble? Well, follow David's example. Turn to the Lord, and he will be your help and deliverer. God bless you. Uh, I am traveling, but Lord willing, I will be with you tomorrow and continue our study. God bless and bye-bye.